All right, so you just basically just squeeze it between your fingers. And this is this is a, a probably a decent silt loam sort of soil sort of texture here. Um, so I should get somewhere between three quarters of an inch and and maybe an inch and a quarter, but I don't know if I don't know if we'll get that or not. Um, so, but you, that, that's how you do it. You just get a bunch in there and you squeeze it between your fingers until you until it breaks. Don't hold it; it breaks on its own weight, kind of thing. All right. Let's see. Okay, so structure. I mentioned structure a little bit on with the B horizon. Um, structure is how the soil kind of holds together. Um, surface horizons, your A horizons tend to have a lot of roots, a lot of roots. And um, when you have a lot of roots, they just kind of make the soil form little balls. We call that granular structure. Um, and if you see it down here, you're going to say, well, Mike, this looks just like granular structure. But the difference is, this is, this is what we call subangular blocky structure. Now, subangular blocky structure kind of looks like it's round, but I mean, if you, if you get closer into it, this is nice, nice and dry, so you won't get your hands too dirty. Um, you, you, if you break it apart, you see how it breaks into, you know, kind of rounded stuff. Kind of not rounded stuff, so subangular blocky. In the in the limestone valleys, especially when you get close to a, a road cut or some area where you could get some a lot of wet drying going on, you can get angular blocky structure, and it's like it's not it's not going to cut you, but it's like a razor, you know. It's it's that kind of a sharpness. Subangular blocky, everything's everything's just kind of round on the edges. Um, granular structure in this 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 darker stuff here is is more of the surface horizon. Um, again, it's usually not 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 as large unless the can the, the the wood you're in are mature. And by mature, I mean these are not mature. Um, you got to have old old trees. Sea horizons <laughs> don't have structure. They're they are they're called acid. Um, or uh, single grain. Single grain you'll find only in sands. Massive you'll find basically anywhere else. Bulk density. Mass over volume, right? So anytime you take this kind of mass and drive on it and make it this kind of a, a volume, I should say this kind of a volume, make it this kind of a volume, you're, ooh, you're increasing I, didn't th I thought I was doing a better job. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you take this, this much volume and reduce it down to this much volume, you're increasing the bulk density because you're reducing the volume, but you're keeping the mass. Okay? So if you're in a farm field and you're driving your tractor across it to harvest or to plant or put fertilizer or whatever you're doing with it, you're going to compact it, therefore you're going to increase the bulk density. If you're driving around the woods cutting trees down, you're going to increase the bulk density because you're driving on it, the trees are falling and pounding the ground in there, and blah, 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 okay? Um, and also, a very common feature in, in areas that are super plowed, you know, year in, year out, are plow, are plow pans, which are high, highly dense areas about the depth of a plow, seven inches, eight inches down. Uh, where all the fines that were that were up here where they just plowed have kind of been by rain moved to the bottom of the plow layer because that's the undisturbed area it's where as far as it could go because that's compacted and and that that plow pan will cause water to perch make the make the farm much more difficult to work all right questions on bulk density uh, all right infiltration infiltration and, per and permeability kind of the same thing um, infiltration, how fast water moves into the soil. So the better the structure, the less dense, the less, the lower the bulk density, the more infiltration you have. Okay? Um, so great structure, you almost never get any kind of runoff in a four inch rain. Um, bad structure, you get runoff in a tenth of an inch rain. Um, and permeability is, is basically you, you go below the infiltration and then how 
they use the term now is saturated hydraulic conductivity, but it's basically how well does that water move within the soil. Um, so uh, permeability, saturated hydraulic conductivity, the water moves easily throughout the whole soil or not. So the slower the permeability of case at, the the slower the water moves, the faster the, that does, obviously, the more, the more water it can move. So if you have good structure at the surface, you have good saturated hydraulic conductivity, all the water can enter into the soil, and you'll never see any kind of runoff at all. But Question. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. So with the high tunnels, they do that ECT testing, electrical conductivity testing. Is that the same idea as what you're talking about? That is salt increase. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, electrical because salts, salts conduct electricity yeah. really well. So if they go in there and, and the salts are elevated because in, in a high tunnel you're constantly um, adding fertilizer and doing a little bit of, of, of irrigation, uh, but and, and, you're comp and you're walking on it all the time, but because of your, your fertilizer and everything, your salts can in, increase and you, you'll end up having to move the high tunnel or, just, or do that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's a good question though. Okay, uh, available water. Available water is how much water can the soil hold that a plant can get to, basically. Um, so a soil that has a lot of rocks, rocks don't hold water. Doesn't have doesn't have a lot of available water. A, sorry, um, a soil that is high in clay. Well, the clay has got just an enormous amount of surface area and it's got a whole bunch of pore space but it loves water so it holds on to that water really tight so it's not available to the trees a sand has got massive pores but the water moves out of it so quick it doesn't have a lot of available water okay so a silt loam texture west virginia is blessed with it has a lot of water holding capacity you just Make sure we don't compact the soil so we can use it. Um, let's see. Uh, all right, so one of the first things you, you do, um, or you notice, I should say, when you dig a hole is the color of the soil. Mine sell color books. Everybody used one of these before? Seen one of them? So, West Virginia, I mean, I've seen a lot of soils in West Virginia. I know basically what page to go to, to where we are in the state. But, so, first thing you do is you have nice light. We don't have that here, so. And everybody sees color a little bit differently. You know, my, my I may call it this one. Some of you may call it something totally different, but it's going to be close most of the time. Um, so, what, what you do is you take... A moist sample. <laughs> if you hold it, if you hold it down here, you basically can. Okay, that five YR four six is pretty good color. Let's try. The, let's try the other color. You don't just stop, don't stop at the first one you see. Um, experience may get you in the, in the ballpark, but most likely if it's within, if it's in within, if you get it on one chip on one page, it's going to be basically the same value and chroma on the other page. Um, so this one, I mean, 75YR46 is really close. 44 um, four is really close. I mean, both of those are, as far as this soil is concerned, are not any kind of, oh my gosh, we got to watch out what we're doing here kind of color. So we're okay with calling either one of them. If we'd have gotten over here in the low chromas, we would be worried about a water table. And then you could have, you have to think about things. But you don't have a water table in this soil, so we're fine. Um, so, the three things that make up color, I should have probably said this first. Hue, value, and chroma. Okay? The hue is what page you're on. Um, so, when I said I'm on 75YR, that's my hue, and that's the page I'm on. Um, then, the value is how bright it is up and down the page. Okay? The, the lighter the color, the higher the value. So, seven, a 75 YR81 is white. Hard to get much lighter than that. Um, a 75 YR42 
2.51, we're still on the same chroma page, but it's black. So on this one row, we go from black to white. Okay, and so we move to the we move on, along horizontally along the chroma page, the chroma line. I mean, the column. Then we're getting a, a, a what's, I guess a, a richer color. I guess you want to say, um, or basically. Uh, so uh, again, seven five YR four. I think four four is probably the the right call for this particular soil. Um, so it's got a 75YR hue, a 4 value, and a 4 chroma. You just follow up there to where you, to whatever chip you get to.